Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch, that's Stewie, my sidekick sloth, and today it's kind of an interesting topic. First of all, it's story time. I'm going to dish on a client who absolutely hated the questions I was asking and why this was problematic and why this was a perfect example of the type of client I do not like to work with. So let's get to it. Let me back up for a second. I am famous for asking a lot of questions. I ask a lot of questions in my regular non-business life. If you talk to Mr. Word Nerd, he will tell you, yes, she asks a ton of questions about everything. I've always been that way. I think it was a bit of a deflection mechanism as a kid. I grew up as a fat kid and, you know, the way to take the focus off of me and to get people to stop making fun of me was to, you know, put the focus on them and ask people questions. So I became very, 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 very good at getting people to talk about themselves. And this has spilled over into my freelance life, which is usually, usually an asset, or should I say usually clients, the clients I like working with, see as an asset. So let me set the stage. The client found me through an online search, Boston copywriter, something like that, because guess what, kids? Search engine optimization works. And if you have a website, you should optimize it. But I digress. So they reached out to me with this very urgent and hush hush project. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I have no interest in outing anyone or anything like that. That's not the purpose of this video. They needed a very powerful and compelling one to two page document. Had to do a lot of heavy lifting this document. I knew nothing about this business and they knew I knew nothing about this business. I knew about the industry the business was in, but I didn't know about the actual company. And I had to know a lot about this company to write this document. So of course I had questions. I wish I could think of every single question I could possibly have during the kickoff call, but that's not how it works. Sometimes after the kickoff call, your mind is percolating and you're thinking about things. And you're like, oh, this brings up another question or they send you materials and you're looking through their content library or their assets. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. I have a question about that. I front load my questions so that I can produce a really close, almost perfect first draft. And I'm not bragging or anything. That's my goal. I don't like having to do endless revisions and clients don't either. So if I do my job and ask as many questions as I possibly can to make sure I understand things, the project, the topic, all the different pieces, then I have a much better chance of hitting a home run with that first draft. Most clients I work with appreciate, even if they joke, even if you see them rolling their eyes, like, okay, Robin has questions again. They at least appreciate that even though it might be annoying to have to answer these endless questions in the beginning, they realize that it's going to get them a better product. They realize I'm asking these questions to help them. I try to be mindful about how many emails I'm sending because a lot of this is happening virtually. After that kickoff call, which I record, there are more questions. Inevitably, that's, that's just the way it works. It made sense that I had all these questions and it made sense that I had to ask them and I wasn't about to guess. And here, here is the way the client responded. I'm going to, I'm going to flash the two emails I got. Okay. So here's email number one, hoping this is the last set of questions you have for us before seeing the, before we see the first draft. Well, <laughs> that's probably not the case client. And then here's the second email I got. I think you have more than enough here to draft the one pager. So this person's responses to my very legit questions was just, that was super annoying and a perfect example of the type of client I didn't want to work with. And I knew in my head, I was like, all right, this is probably a one-off project, but if by some chance they come back to me for more work, nope, 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 nope. Clients who get it, clients who understand the process are not going to be afraid of questions. And that brings up my four words to describe my ideal client, not afraid of questions. That's four words, right? Not afraid of questions. Yeah, it is. The clients who I want to work with are the ones who, who welcome the questions, even if they can be annoying. I have had clients chuckle and say, Robin, you ask more questions than a five-year-old. That's what the client said, but he realized, he realized he needed to answer them because he was going to get a much more quality piece of content out of me by answering my questions that my questions are relevant. Sometimes I ask questions that the clients have never asked themselves. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of an embarrassment with some, especially I think this woman was getting a little resistant because 
she just didn't understand why any of the, the questions I was asking were necessary. And though they were necessary, they were absolutely necessary. She knew her business, her company so well, but I didn't. So I asked these questions because I need to know the answers to write the content and the clients who get it are the ones I want to work with. And I do have clients who get it. I have clients who all the time say to me, you ask the best questions. That's important. So I'm going to flash this response from another client, one of my favorite clients who gets it. That's why I love working with you. You think through everything. And it's not because I'm so impressive. It's just because I ask the right questions and I have clients who are not afraid of answering them. So you might be wondering what happened with this, you know, kind of cranky client who was sending me these emails saying, I think you have more than enough to create the first draft. I mean, talk about kind of, that was, that was, that made me cringe. That response made me cringe because here's the other thing. You hired me because I'm the expert, because I'm the writer. I should be the one to tell you when I have enough information to write the first draft, not you. And that's very annoying when someone says, you know, you have enough to do this. This shouldn't take you long. You should be able to do that in your sleep. That's always a red flag. See my video about red flags. I'll include a link somewhere above and also below because that is a red flag when someone is telling you the expert at writing how to do your job. So anyway, what happened, huh? Well, guess what? All of my questions paid off. And not only did I deliver the one pager, which actually turned out it was supposed to be between one and two pages. I think I went with two pages because there was just so much information. And guess what? I gave them four options because that's what I do. All of my questions are relevant. And I usually present clients with an array of options. And I did in this case, they had four, four completely solid, comprehensive options. That's what I do. And guess what? Her tone changed pretty quickly once she saw what I delivered. She was even addressing me with, hi, Robin. And her email sounded a little perkier and brighter and very excited because I think she was thinking, I, I don't know what she was thinking. My questions made her nervous. And let me just say this. She was in an industry where she should have known better. It wasn't like a small business that just doesn't get content. This was an industry that understands the purpose of content and content marketing and copywriting. So she, my questions should not have scared her. My questions were just bothering her. And that's perfectly fair. She might not have been in the mood to answer them. She might've been rolling her eyes, but her response was what was problematic. And even after I explained very nicely, hey, I know I'm famous for asking a lot of questions. Sorry for making you do a little more heavy lifting, but this is what's gonna help me make sure I get you a solid first draft, which I did. So what can you learn from this? I challenge you, if you are a new copywriter, even if you've been doing this a while, do you have certain words, just like a handful of words, like four to five words to describe your ideal client? If you don't, or you're not sure, that's a good exercise, brainstorm. Like I can honestly say, not afraid of questions, my ideal client, because that, that umbrella of not afraid of questions indicates so much more about the organization I'll be working with. It means they, they value collaboration. They value someone coming in with their expertise. They're not afraid of questions. They're not challenged by them in a bad way. They're challenged by them in a good way. And they are committed to giving me as much information as possible so I can produce the best work for them. That's what those four, wor four words mean to me. So I challenge you to come up with four words or five words or six words, you know, just short to describe your ideal client. And I wanna see them. So share in the comments below and we can talk about them and hopefully other people can comment on them. But what are your words to describe your ideal client? All right, so yeah, I'm Robin the Copy Bitch. That's my story. That's Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And if you like this video, got anything out of it, even a chuckle or two, give it a thumbs up because that helps us out. And we will see you on the next video. Bye.